So, Paul, for all of this course, we've been, how do I say this politely, practical and boring. Now, that's important for what we're talking about in space. I want to go impractical. I want to go beyond what we've talked about. Okay, you're right. So let's uh, go crazy. And we're going to start off by going slightly crazy and then go very crazy. I like that. Um, so let's talk up for our last part of this course about interstellar travel. Because all we've talked about is our own solar system, but I mean... There's a lot more universe. There's a out lot there. more universe out there, and we want to explore. And in fact, not even all of our own solar system. We've mostly, yeah, like, I mean, furthest we've got, most of the time we've been in low Earth orbit. That's right, exactly. Occasionally, we might go as far as Mars, but I mean, we kind of know Mars is Mars. Yeah. So let's look about planets orbiting yep. other stars, interstellar travel. Now, this is a, a common trope in science fiction as well, right? Traveling Absolutely. to other stars, visitors from afar, and I think this is always one of the interesting topics. Is how practical is this as an idea? Because there's a lot of ideas in science fiction. That's right. I mean, there are some science fiction things which are based on our own solar system, yep. things like The Expanse. Yep. But most of them are in you know, Star Wars, Star Trek, all these things. Yeah. They're traveling to multiple star systems. So first of all, why would we want to go to another star system? I mean, one reason is that our sun will eventually die. Yeah. In about two billion years, the sun will be so hot that it will cause the Earth to uh, go into a runaway greenhouse. That's right. Well, we could just move out to Mars then. Um, but you know, another three billion years after that, the sun's going to swell up, melt the inner planets and shrink down to a white dwarf. And that's going to make our solar system pretty uninhabitable. We definitely don't want to be there for that part. Of course, five billion years. I mean, that's as far in the future as our ancestors from the first slime molds. Yeah, exactly. So if you imagine a species as much more advanced than us than we are than the first bacteria, who knows? What's Let's hope they're more. Off. Let's at least hope they're more advanced. Yes. Um, yeah. But really, our solar system is... I want planets like this. I agree. And, and look, I mean, this is great. This is what we think of in science fiction. We think of these worlds that are lush, livable, habitable. With alien civilization. But that's not what we have in our own solar system, no, right? We have this. absolute best we've got is this. I mean... And most are much worse. <laughs> I mean, it's like going to the world's worst beach, right? You show up and it's like the ocean is still 10 kilometers away. Eh, there's not much there. Yeah, so really, um, to make space really fun as opposed to practical you want to go to other star systems That's right. so you look out on a nice clear night and you see lots of other stars about 5,000 to the naked eye on a dark sky site and of course you can't live on stars That's right what we hope is that some of these stars have planets around them and, and, and we how... can maybe live on those planets and some of those planets might be these lush green yeah. alien things that we want and i guess that's one of the first questions is how common how many planets are actually out there to potentially even go to that's right 